and hit a grand slam. That's what Omar Vargas did today for Panama and his teammates. All right. We are good to go. ESPN, the Little League World Series continues. Got to make sure everything's and working. Ravi, Jess, and Julie for X and Sevy and our entire crew down at Volunteer right. Stadium. Mike Monaco saying so long up to Ravi. Michael, thank you very much. What a way to get it started. Now we shift a little bit. We Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Can everybody, see, me? Can everybody see the game? We will have a pitcher duel as well. Nolan Gifford, he will go for Nevada. Connor Curtis goes for Rhode Island. Might we see the 62nd no-hitter? All right, there we go. I'm checking it on my phone. This is my real first time doing a live, so and I just want to make sure everything is going well. Looks good. All around the world. All right, so become a powerful force. Let's wishing and working do that. To adopt Jordan, first comment. Uh, I, I appreciate the kind words, man. I'm so happy that uh, you're that I'm able to help you. Um, yeah, that's kind of the whole reason. Let me mute the commercials. That's kind of the whole reason that I did. Um, hold on. Let's mute that. Yeah, that's kind of the whole reason that I started this whole thing is just because I, I just really wanted to you know, help as many people as I could. And I was already helping people uh, kind of around my area and everything. And I just really wanted to extend my reach, you know? So I'm, I'm super happy that uh, I'm able to help you guys and um, I'll be, I'll be here forever. Like this, this is your time to ask any questions that you want um, while we watch the game. So I thought, I just thought that this was a really good idea to kind of connect with you guys and, um, and just kind of, like I said, answer any questions, watch the game with you. Uh, just spend a little time, you know? Um, so Jordan, I'm super appreciative of, of all the kind words and everything. And I'm, I'm really happy that I could help you. There's way more to come, way more to come. So here, it looks like they're back. And I guess everybody who's, everybody who's watching, tell me where you're from. Where, where are you, where are you tuning in today? So a lot of pitches that are good, a lot of sweeps and misses. Oh my gosh, watching Panama just absolutely dominate. How about the grand slam to get Panama on the board and the pitching both sides of the plate? Omar Vargas did it all. 10 Ks and a granny. Four, nothing is your final. So as you can see, my I'm from Maryland. So I was born and raised in Maryland, Montgomery County, Maryland. Um, and it's, that's where that's where I do everything now and. So, like I said, it, it would be really cool to see where you guys are at. So, if you, if you can put in the chat where you're from, that would be that would be really awesome. How many how many areas we're coming from, right? <laughs> All right. So, I I didn't actually watch the first game, but Panama just threw a no hitter. <laughs> what a great way to start the Little League World Series, right? <laughs> That's crazy. Rob, we're just down on the field. It's the kids. I mean, the smiles on their faces, walking to the dugout, the coach is saying, hey, we were stressed in regionals, but they get here. This is what it's about. Now you just enjoy it. And if you, and if there's any problems, like you can't hear the, hear the feed. Washington. Nice, Jordan. I like it. I like it. So if there's, like I said, if there's anything wrong with the feed, you can't hear anything. You can't hear me, see me or anything. Just let me know. Put it in the chat and I can, I can do my best to try to get back. Like, like I said, this is my first live. So we're, we're going to be here for a while. So there's going to be some time to make everything good. And I'm going to say this slow because it's so ridiculous. 10 innings pitch. So yeah, I don't know if you guys watched any of the regionals, but, um, I did not see this kid, Nolan, um, but I saw the other kid who's going to pitch, and I, I believe he's going to pitch. Um, yeah, so that's Nolan. Um, and he was just completely lights out. When I, when I saw him pitch, he was completely lights out. He had great command, and he was sound on the mound, um, and it was just really cool to watch. Ryan, 36 years ago, you played for Henderson, Nevada, Little League, in their first ever Little League team. Talk about a full circle moment. What has this been like for you? Yeah, it's it's unbelievable, really. You know, I love baseball. I loved it as a kid. Um, being the father of five boys, we've been on the field a lot. And uh, to finally, you know, kind of reach the pinnacle of success here. This is so awesome. Just to is, is have this experience. Uh, so I'm a new stand. father. Yeah, um, my my son just turned really one. An and 
get to do it with I, I mean, I'm not I'm one to push anything on him. Really like, I'm not going to, like, make him play baseball so or anything. It's, it's his choice. But if he if you? he does choose to play baseball and if he does want me as his coach, um, it would just – this is just an amazing experience. And uh, this would be really cool to experience just with your game, son, you know? Quite well. Having your son experience it on the field, having you as the coach, that would be – I mean, that's special. That's special right there. To feel, but it's a little bit different feel <laughs> when you're here. Meantime, he threw a no-hitter in their regional final. The other guy struck out a double-digit number as well. And so let me know in the chat. Have you guys watched any of the uh, any of the regionals? Did you see any 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 of the good games? I, I saw a couple games. Um, and it seems that's the guy who I saw, Connor Curtis. Yep, I saw him pitch, and he, like I said, he was completely lights out. Completely lights out. So. If he's pitching today, I'm not sure if he is. It would be it's gonna be a great pitching matchup. From left field foul pole to right field foul pole. We have one no hitter. Will we see some hits and home runs? Our first pitch is coming up. With barely right, so. milk, you'll want to savor every moment. With fifty and like I said, during the commercials. If you could just put any questions that you have that you want to ask and you want me to answer on live, I, this is this is your time. So, like I said, during the commercials, I'm going to do a QA and a and ask me anything about anything, you know, um, anything that you want help with, anything that you want to know about me. Um, I'm an open book. So this is this is a great time to ask some questions while we have the commercials going on. So feel free at any point during the live, uh, just put in. Put in some questions and I'll be sure to answer them during the commercials. Yeah, so I see that Jordan uh, is a is a 10 youth softball coach. So that's I mean, that's really, really cool. Um, this and it's really cool just because uh, the the skills that we have in baseball, they they don't only apply to baseball, they also apply to softball, right? So it's you can if you're a baseball coach, it, you don't have to always, you know, collaborate with baseball coaches. You could collaborate with softball coaches. Right. And vice versa. So um, that's that's really cool. So I'm, I'm really it's really cool to see that he's uh, that you're from uh, the softball softball area. That's awesome. All right. So I don't know if you guys uh, tune into my weekly videos, at least lately. Did I play baseball after high school? I did. I played in college. Um, I played three years in college. So I jumped around a little bit. Um, I started, so when I, I got recruited to Shippensburg University in Pennsylvania. Um, and my, this is, this is kind of a note to anybody who's watching, who's going to play in college. Choose your choose your major and what your career is going to be and then play baseball and i did the opposite <laughs> so i chose baseball and i chose to play baseball at shippensburg for the first year and then i basically cho chose a major in there and it was i think it was criminal justice and um i basically grew up when like csi was really popular and like uh like nypd blue and all the cop shows and everything so I was like, oh, that would be pretty cool to do. Let me do that. And then I got into the classes and I was just like, this is terrible. I, I don't I don't like it. So I ended up um, moving away. I ended up transferring to a community college, our local community college in Montgomery County. Um, and I played there. And then after that, I finished my um, degree uh, at Salisbury University on the eastern shore of Maryland. Um, so I kind of moved around a little bit. Uh, but like I said, my first choice in Shippensburg, I chose baseball and then my my career choice, and it, that just didn't work out. So, um, but yes, I did play baseball after college, uh, after high school. All right, looks like we're back. And do great things at the major leagues. Bryce Harper, Chris Bryant, and Greg Maddox. Perhaps we'll see the next one of those. Let's meet them. Oh. My name's Cruz Lester, and my favorite player is Tony Gwynn. So, Matt, I said your David videos have helped me so much, so thank you. Uh, I was the first time manager for Little League Majors, and our team came out champions. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great to hear, Matt. Uh, I'm so happy I could help you. Like I said, that's that's the reason I do it, and I'm I'm so I'm so grateful that I'm able to reach so many people and help out so many people. So I'm really happy that you've got that you found some value in, in the stuff that uh, I put out. And congratulations on the champions. That's amazing. Not too many people get to experience that. So take that in. Take that in, and prepare for next year. Right? That's awesome. My name is Nolan. 
Colin Gifford, and my favorite team is the Red Sox. My name is Chase Daly, and my favorite food is raviolis. My name is Arden. I really like how they do this. Basically, like every single game, they say all of the uh, things that they like, their favorite stuff, and it's really funny to see, to hear what some of the kids like. It's, it's really cool. We've got 20 teams that accomplished this summer. Ryan Gifford is the manager of Nevada, and of course, his son will be on the mound. Get on that mound, you get to be a tall dude, especially when you're 5'10". All right, and like I said, if you guys watched any of the regionals and you have any highlights from the regionals that you saw, um, I only watched a couple games, but uh, if you have any highlights that you want to point out, feel free to put them in the chat. So they're batting 12 today. All right. Batting 12. They will not necessarily play in the field that we are just about set to get going. Cruz Lester will lead things off. All right, here we go. Here we go. I have a feeling it's going to be a major pitcher's duel. Looks like he's handing the ball off to the catcher. So the very first time that I saw this pitcher, I immediately saw how calm he was. He's just completely calm, especially in the regional championship game. He was completely just so calm and just he just has pinpoint accuracy, you know. And I mean, that's a huge thing, especially in the Little League World Series where all your nerves and you don't really you're 12 years old. You don't really know how to sometimes handle those nerves. But I mean, this kid, he is an example of it, you know. Seventy-six Little League World Series, and we picked up our sixty-first no-hitter as Panama knocked off I'm the public to get it started. That's foul and I mean, still talking about the pitcher. His, if you see his mechanics, they are so repeatable. He repeats the same mechanics every single pitch, and that is a key component in just accuracy in general. Um, so if you're finding some of your pitchers sort of you know, be, becoming a little wild. Like, take a look at their mechanics. Are they? Oh, off speed. Nice. Got him. Got him. That was a really nice pitch. Um, yeah. So, like I said, if you ever see any of your pitchers sort of getting wild a little bit, take a look at their mechanics. Are they? Are they repeating the same mechanics every single time? You know, um, that's a really nice changeup. Really nice changeup. And Next up is David Edwards. The right handed hitter who's 5'2, 118 pounds. And you know, if you've watched any of my content, you know that I'm all about the fastball and the changeup in Little League. So that was a great example of throwing a really good changeup uh, as a 12 year old. Because even though even though the changeup, I believe, is the best pitch in baseball um, when it's thrown right, it's really, it's hard to master. It's hard to master. So um, that's really cool that he has. And then he just blows it by him with the 71. That's, I mean, that's a key to pitching, changing speeds. Changing speeds is the, is one of the, you know, core components of pitching. And it's really important to, you know, teach these kids that, you know, like, like I said in the, in my previous videos, they, some kids, all they want to do is velocity and throw hard and throw hard, but that's not pitching. That's throwing, you know? That is a really nice pitch. And the reason this kid is successful is because he's changing speeds, right? And it's it's just such a key component because he's thinking like a pitcher, you know? He's thinking like a pitcher. He's He obviously can throw hard with high velocity, but that's not how he thinks, you know? He's not thinking like, oh, I'm just going to blow up by him every time because I have a strong arm. He is a pitcher who happens to throw hard, you know, and that's a huge difference. And not a lot of kids, not a lot of kids can do that. Nice. There you go. First three. Oh, man, this is going to be a good game. Nice pitcher's duel, like I said before. All right, commercial break. So we did have one comment. Uh, Coach J Gaming in college. Did you ever go help with little league teams? I started a travel organization two years ago, and would like to invite college players to come work with the kids. Just don't know how to go about it. Um, that's a great question. Um, I don't. I never helped out with little league. Uh, 
I kind of, after I graduated was when I started getting into the coaching. Um, one thing was because after college, I mean, I, I'm a PE teacher, so I'm a, I'm a teacher and um, I just needed a little bit of extra money. And I knew that I wanted to keep baseball in my life and I wanted to continue just being a part of the game. And this was, and being a, a, an elementary school PE teacher, I already uh, kind of had that skill of working with kids and you know, knowing how to teach them skills. Um, so I just thought it was a, it was a great solution just to go into coaching and teach these little kids, uh, just how to play baseball. So, um, but it's funny cause I'm actually the commissioner of a travel organization in Maryland. Um, it's, we're called the Maryland keys and I have had these exact same, um, idea. So, um, I was hired as commissioner last year um, and my, one of my goals is to incorporate the surrounding colleges. So, um, honestly, I would just, I would start emailing, you know, I would start emailing, um, and just see where that gets you. And then if, if you have like some near colleges, maybe you could, um, maybe you could like go actually attend those colleges, like during this, during the school year or during the uh, baseball season, um, uh, maybe talk to the coach after the game or anything like that. So, like I said, I would start off with some emails. Um, and if that do doesn't really get you anywhere, then um, I would actually go and go to the colleges if they're if they're near enough for you to go to. Um, but that, I mean, that is that is tough. It's and I don't think it's because the kid, the college kids don't want to help. I think it's just a matter of reaching them. I, I just think it's a matter of like letting them know what your plan is and having them get on board. I think that's the hardest part. Um, because I, in my travel organization, um, the Maryland keys, I have, um, I'm looking for paid coaches. And one of my ideas was to start a partnership with surrounding colleges just to get graduated players, um, to be in a paid coaching position. Um, so I'm still working on that, but it's, uh, it's, it's definitely tough. Um, and like I said, I don't think that it's because of, um, I don't think it's because of the college kids don't want to do it. I think it's just a matter of reaching them. All right. Eric Gibri is the Rhode Island manager, and he's got himself a team that has relied on pitching and defense primarily. And then, of course, Jordan, you asked, uh, do I have any pitching drills to work on? Participation? Um, yes, I do. Um, I can't I can't necessarily like show you right now just because I'm like sitting down in the corner. Right. Um, but I if, if you and Connor get a chance to bat again. If you want to email me, if you want to email me, I can I can send you those uh, those pitching drills for sure. We can we can connect that way. How, how about that? Thirty-seven strikeouts. All right, let's see. Nolan Griffin. Gifford, Griffin, something like that. Prepared to face this type of velocity. Have you seen it before? This much of it? You haven't. So this is a different style. A little bit of velocity, seventy seventy-one, but. Actually, in my video coming out on Thursday, it's the baseball education, coaching, and skill development for 10U and 11-year-olds. And I, I talk a lot about – nice pitch. I talk a lot about um, these kids as they're getting older. They're starting to develop their own style, right? And if you can see this batter, he's he's kind of got his, uh, his hands moving a little bit like that. Nice pitch. Um, so he's got his hands moving a little bit, and – you know, that's his style. That's what's comfortable for him. And I think it's uh, it's enormous. It's huge to, um, you know, coach. And I talk about it in the video to coach the core components of each skill into their style. So I talk about not having a cookie cutter mindset where every player can fit into this cookie cutter and there's only one way to do a skill such as hitting or fielding or pitching or whatever. Every kid has their own little style of how they like to do things. We need, as coaches, we need to kind of bake those core components into their style. Is the only one I've ever heard of. You know, a little wild pitch. So this pitcher, it seems like his nerves are going a little bit, right? That's different from the first pitcher that we just saw. Um, so this kid, it seems, seems like his nerves are going a little bit. Um, if I was the coach, I wouldn't let it go too far. I would probably go take a visit and just tell him to, you know, calm down a little bit. You know, you are a pitcher. You've done this before. Just just you and the catcher, right? 
spot. That's when you know you want to hit. <laughs> You're chasing up with the eyeballs. Connor Curtis doesn't see a lot of strikes. He walked five times in the regionals. A lot of pitchers throw around him. But he came to hit. Now they set up outside. And that one was nice pitch. Over the heart of the plate. Curtis could catch up with it. One ball and one thing I noticed with this pitcher is he, see, he seems effortless, you know. And the one thing when pitchers look effortless and they're still throwing with high velocity, that's mechanics. As a baseball player. One, two, that one swing and miss. First base is open. It's missed by the catcher. Oh, tough break, tough break. That's tough for the catcher. And going back to what I was saying, like going back to what I was saying, he's he seems he seems effortless, and that's mechanics, right? If you're repeating your mechanics every single time, then fluid mechanics will only increase your velocity, right? Because there's no extra movement. There's no excuse me. Um, there's no. Uh, like I said, extra movement, right? You're you're just fluid every single time. You're smooth. You're flowing, and that flow increases your velocity, and that makes you look effortless. Six for eleven at the regional first pitch. Good one, and they will. There you go. So as a batter, you have you know no outs, runner on what now second and third. You're trying to hit the ball to the right side. You know this these twelve year olds they should know situational hitting. This kid should not be getting up here trying to swing for the fences. Oof. Uh, he should he should know situational hitting. He's like, I have no outs. I have a runner on second and third. I need to score these score these guys. Let me get an outside pitch. Let me drive it to the right side, or just kind of get anything to the right side of the field so he can get an RBI. Oof. I thought for sure you had a spare ball. Yeah, you could tell he kind of he, he tried to ramp that one up, right? So he tried to ramp that one up in velocity. He tried to throw it harder. He didn't try to pitch it harder, you know? So he tried to throw it harder, so it was a little high because his mechanics were a little off. That's what we were talking about, right? He's trying to take it to the right side. Situational hitting. So now one, two count. One, two count. If I was the pitcher, I would either throw an inside fastball or an off speed off the plate. So that was high. And I understand why you did that. But this kid, if you, if you notice, this kid has proven that he can catch up to that ball. He's proven that he can I mean, not catch up to it because obviously he hit a foul, but he can make contact with that ball. So if you throw it hard in low or soft off the plate, that is way different than a high hard fastball. Because now this kid has seen two high fastballs in a row. You need to change his eye level, change his eye level, soft away. They tried it, right? They tried it. You saw the catcher setting up outside, and that was obviously an off-speed pitch. They were trying it, so that's that's good. That's thinking like a pitcher, not a thrower. Fairly shallow too. Jojo Dixon can run everything down at center. Now inside. This one on the ground is second. The run will come in. Perfect. That's perfect situational hitting. Right. So the pitcher did did his job. He threw a hard fastball in. Right, but the batter, he just made a good hit. He just made good contact and hit that ball to the right side. So that's exactly what he wanted to do. Instead of a strikeout, remember Gifford has a ton of put the ball in play, gets himself a run. All right, we got two uh, or one out. Runner on third. All right, coming up, packing. Shortstop. So if I'm the pitcher, I would just go right back to that. You saw he was a little behind. So he was a little behind. Maybe you raise it up a little bit, go with that a little a little bit higher fastball. All right, so that was an off-speed pitch. You just threw a fastball that the kid was behind. He fouled it like almost behind him, right? He his bat did not catch up to the fastball. So when you throw an off-speed pitch right after that, you speed up his bat, 
right? You speed up is bad. That, you don't want to do that. So he tried to go with the high, with the high fastball again. And, I mean, that's good just because he's changing speeds and he's changing the eye level of the hitter. Um, but this kid hasn't proven that he can catch up to the fastball. So it looks like they're going inside, hard in, just like that. Yep. That's a good pitch. That's a really good pitch. Hugging that line. Everything's been to the right side. Foul balls. So if I was the pitcher, I would do that same location, but lower. I would go with the low inside fastball. 21st pitch, one of the milestones, little league. That They're going outside. So I I I understand why they're why they're doing that. They they wanted to go soft away, which is fine. But like I said, this kid he hasn't proven that he can catch up to the fastball. So if you if you can throw a fastball and get people out, only throw the fastball. All right, so that was good. High high fastball. All right, now two two. You can now or three two. It's three two. So I would go with the outside fastball. Know that you can get a strike with the fastball. It looks like they're going inside fastball. There you go. There you go. And that's exactly what I was saying is like you if you can throw a fastball by these by these kids, only throw the fastball. The, the fastball is the easiest pitch to throw. And if the kids if they can't prove to you that they can hit the fastball, then throw the fastball. You don't need any other pitches. Right? And then when they start showing you that they can hit the fastball, that's when you break out your off-speed pitches and then really surprise them. And, and they're like, oh, like, where did that come from? I didn't know you had that. All right, misses location a little bit. If you notice, when he delivers the pitch, his glove arm flails out to the first base side. Check it out. So that one, he did better. On that outside pitch, on that first pitch outside that he missed on, his glove arm flew out to the first base side. Glove hand to your chest equals accuracy. The ball will go where your glove goes. So since that glove flailed out to the first base side, that's exactly where the pitch went. Fans will remember that name. That was a nice pitch. If you saw his glove hand, the glove hand came to the chest, right? So that's why he was more accurate. All right, two outs, runner on third. If you're the batter, you're just trying to get the ball in play. You're just trying to get the ball in play. All right, there you go. Curtis gets stranded at third. Queen has come in, and Rhode Island. Leads this one, one nothing. All right, so remember, during the commercials, I'm answering any questions that you have, right? So feel free to post any questions in the chat. Um, we're going to be here for the entire game, so I'm an open book. Um, and yeah, let's mute the commercials. Boom. Um, like I said, I'm an open book, and uh, and I just want to say, like, I'm, I'm really appreciative of you guys, like, hanging out with me today, just watching the game. Um, hopefully you're enjoying it. You know, you can put in the chat if you're enjoying this, if you're getting a lot from it. Um, I'm hopefully I'm not talking too much. <laughs> so, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, kind of, you know, just give you, give you a little bit of how my brain works and when I'm watching these kids and when I'm watching the players, uh, what I'm thinking about and how I'm always thinking about how I can help a player get better. And I know that you are too. I know all coaches are, but um, hopefully this commentary just kind of lets you, lets you kind of into my brain a little bit and, uh, and how I think about things and how I, how I learn, uh, sort of how I can help these players. Right. Are certain positions better as a secondary position for pitchers? So we have, boom. Are certain positions better as a secondary position for pitchers? Um, I would say in youth baseball, not really. Um, I guess the one thing that I could think about is being a catcher, because if you're pitching, you're throwing every pitch, obviously. Um, and then if you're if you go to catcher, you're you're then throwing every pitch again, right? Um, so maybe the catcher, I would say, but really, I, I mean, 
I really believe that all youth players should play as many positions as possible. And I actually say this, I talk about this in my video coming out on Thursday. Um, and the reason is, is because when you get to the next level, you want to be able to tell a high school coach that you, when he asks you, Hey, where do you play? Hey, coach Hart, where do you play? Your kid, the, this kid should play, should basically say, I play anywhere, put me anywhere. And I play there, you know? Oh, there's already, cause if you're, if you focus in on one position, such as like shortstop, if you get to high school and there's already three shortstops there, you're either not going to make the team or you're not going to play. But if you tell the coach, Oh, I, I don't like, I play shortstop, but I also play left field. Oh, there's two left fielders. Oh, I play center field. Oh, I can also play third base. You give yourself so many more options to get playing time and get on the field if you play multiple positions. So um, these players, they should be encouraged to play multiple positions, as many positions as they can. And plus, it, it helps them learn the game more, right? It helps them learn all of the different positions and how the game works from all sorts of the sides of the field. All right. All right, let's do it. As we get set to start the second inning, six inning games, double elimination oh. format. Burn Thank out. you, Joe. I appreciate it. Like I said, hopefully I'm not talking too much. <laughs> All right, so this kid. Will be Jackson McMullen, Arlie Daniel, and JoJ, JoJo Carke. Another good one. No, like I said, this kid is just, he has sound like mechanics. So. He is like calm. You can tell that he's focused, right? Ooh, a little, little bit out. All right, so one and two. I go back to this team has not proven that they can hit the fastball. So I, if they were me, I would keep on burying that fastball, especially with this kid's location, especially because this kid is so accurate. Just bury that fastball, bury the fastball. And then if they get a couple hits, that's when you can bring out the changeup or the spinning pitch or whatever you throw, the off speed. Nice high pitch. Just climbing the ladder, right? So those first couple pitches were in the strike zone. The kid fouled them off. When you when you climb the ladder and you change that eye level, that that pitch kind of looks like what the that pitch kind of looks like the two pitches that the kid just saw, but just a little bit higher. And obviously, this kid is throwing with high velocity, so he's not able to catch up to it. Arlie Daniel, your turn. Again, bury the fastball. A lot late, and I think a part of it's so. If, so let's transition to the hitters now. What do you know about this pitcher? You know that he throws strikes. You know that he throws with high velocity. As a as a hitter, what would you do? You know, you might choke up a little bit. You might widen your stance a little bit. You might squat down in your stance a little bit more. But the one of the most important things to do is just shorten your swing, right? Shorten your swing, take the knob of the bat straight to the ball, and almost play pepper, you know? So hopefully uh, you guys know what pepper is, and you've played it before and have your players play it, but it's literally almost like pepper. You're just trying to make contact with the ball because as a hitter, you have to remember that – ooh, nice pitch. You have to remember that when there is a high velocity – the pitch velocity does the work for you. All you have to do is make contact with a smooth swing, right? So climb the ladder again, right? Changing that eye level, changing that eye level of the hitter, keeping them guessing. So as a hitter, as I was saying, as a hitter, you know that he throws with high velocity and, and accurate. You know that you're going to get a strike. So you should be swinging at the very first strike that you see that you think is good. And you should have a short swing, choke up a little bit, and just try to make contact because you know that the velocity of the pitch is going to do the work for you of hitting it out of the infield for a hit, you know? They have used that. And... And it's really easy for hitters to be intimidated by a high by a high velocity thrower. Um, and I guess as a coach, that's just something that you might have to remind your kids. And it's like, hey, 
<laughs> my coach, my coach always used to say when I was younger, he used to always say, how do they put their pants on? They put their pants on just like we do, you know, one leg first and then the other leg. So like, like he was basically saying they're human, right? So it's not like he's out there some like, you know, Marvel superhero or anything like that, right? Wow. Nice pitch. That seemed like almost like a two seam, right? Two seam, he'll throw outside. I'm starting to really feel it. He's got nine swings and misses. <laughs> yeah, right nine there. swings and misses. That's feeling it. She's asking, I think if Queen is okay, that ball's coming in so hard. Yeah, this kid is he, this kid is good. Injury yeah. too. He is good. Catch all this velocity. See if he's in pain. That's a strike. Nice pitch. That is three in the inning, five for the game. Connor Curtis. Struck out 14 in his last game. So, as a coach, as a coach, you can put in the chat, what would you say to your team if you're the hitter? If you're the hitter is facing this pitcher right now, what would you say? How would you regroup your team? Because you just went through two innings. You just went through two innings without getting a hit. I don't think they got a hit. Um, and you had a lot of strikeouts, right? So... With the game being only six innings, there's not there's not much time. There's not much time to rebound, right? So this is your time as a coach to group your team and you know tell them, like like I said, this kid is human. You, you know that. What do you know? He he's going to throw strikes and he's not going to walk you. You know you don't need to mention the high velocity because they already know that. And if you say that, then it might intimidate them and just make them kind of have the reverse effect that you want, right? But you know that he's going to throw strikes. You know that he's not going to walk you. So look for that first pitch that's good. Shorten up your swing. Choke up a little bit. You know, have a short load. And try to just play, make contact, play pepper, right? Just get the ball in play. So, and like I said before, just put, post your post your uh, questions in the chat. I'm, I'm feel, feel free to ask me anything. I'm, I'm, I will do my best to answer it the best I can. Um, but yeah, like if, if I was a coach, I would, uh, if I was the coach of this hitting team who hasn't got, who is facing this kid, that's exactly what I would say. I would say, you know, and, and like, like, even if it's, it's tough because the, the load, the load that I think would work for this pitcher is a rocking load is basically, there's no front foot, there's no front foot moving, right? All you do is when you're hitting like this. You rock back and you go, right? And I think that is the quickest load that a kid could have. However, at the same time, I don't think that you should be coaching that kind of stuff in a game, especially a World Series game, right? It's, it's, I don't think it's going to help. I don't think that, you know, the, the kids are going to respond well to that. They're going to be like, all right, well, you know, we could have worked that on that in practice, but this is not the time. So it's, it's tough. Maybe that's something that you could coach in the practices and then kind of revisit in the game. Say, hey, remember that rocking load that we practiced? Maybe you should try that to kind of quicken up your bat. So I might have one of my batters try to bunt. Let's show this. I might have one of my batters try to bunt to get on base, put pressure on the pitcher with the base runners. That's perfect, right? Change it up. That's because, like I said before, you know that he's throwing strikes. So you know that the pitch is going to be in there and the pitch is going to be buntable. Here, let's uh, get the sound back on. So you know that the pitch is going to be in there. So I, I love the idea of bunting, you know, just change it up. Make the defense prove to you that they can make the plays. And that is five, six, seven in this order. Six, seven, eight, I should say. And remember, a so on that one, that one was a good example of the pitcher's Everybody glove hand kind of flying out a little bit. You go back to the top of the order. Three is the center fielder. That one was much better. If you see the difference between those two pitches, the first one was a little bit outside, right? And that's kind of just because he he was flailing open a little bit, and his and the pitch got away from him, high arm side. On that last one, the glove hand came to the well, came to the chest, and he was much more accurate. Yeah, I'm gonna come over and check that. So the conversation is gonna be about catcher interference, whether Jackson McCullough catcher McCullough interference. And Gavin Goodrie's bat made contact. 
Now, I think this would be a good time to talk about um, kind of like unforced mental errors. And when obviously we never want them to happen like ever, but especially when you're like, for instance, on the on the defensive team. No, nah, that wasn't catching the interference. Um, especially when you're in the defense and you're kind of just, you know, the, the other team is playing a little bit better than you. Unforced errors are huge. You don't want to beat yourself, right? You, you want the other team to beat you. Um, you never want to beat yourselves. Nice. Oh, that was a little bit far out. All right, so two and two if you're the hitter. I would look for a fastball. I would look for a fastball and adjust the adjust the off speed. There you go. So now two two count again. You just saw. I believe that was a fastball. Um. Now. Having lost one of their middle of the order bats. So that was an off speed. So the pitcher went from fastball to off speed. Now, I would probably go or 3 2 now. 3 2. So, if I, like I said, if I was the. Oh, wow. I don't know about that one. That was a little high. That was a little high for me. That's tough. I mean, if that hitter is going back to your dugout, you have to remind them because that that's a really easy that's a really easy opportunity for the for the hitter to get really down because obviously it was a little bit far out. They probably didn't think it was a strike and then they struck out, and that's a really easy time for them to get down on themselves. You can't let that happen. You have to remind them, hey, you're gonna get the next one. That was a that was an iffy call, um, but also you have to learn for next time that umpire now that you know that umpire's calling that strike so if you see that ball again you better be swinging there you go something that this team talked about relying on the rest of their lineup only having 11 so 2 fastball only looking for fastball that was it he just missed it that was a good swing. That was a 2-0. That was a good 2-0 swing um, on a fastball. He just missed it. That was a good pitch by the pitcher. Nice pitch. That's the same exact location on the opposite side that the other kid just struck out on. So the umpire is consistent. She's letting you know that she's consistent. So tell your hitters that. The umpire is consistent. Ooh. Hit him. So the umpire is showing that she's consistent. So that's something that you could tell your batter. Say, hey, I know that it doesn't really look like a strike, but she's calling it. So make sure that you're ready. More on that arm side, that right side of the plate. That's where a lot of his misses have been going. So she even just said, the commentator, uh, Jessica, Jessica Mendoza, is it? I can't remember her name, but um, she just said that most of his missed pitches are going high arm side, you know, and that's, I I believe that is the timing. That's, that's his timing. And that is mainly because of the glove hand. He's inconsistent with his glove hand coming to his chest. Hmm. Go back to Mountain Ridge, that team from 2014. And to go even a little deeper, if you're missing high arm side, that is most likely because your lower half is ahead in your in the timing is ahead of your upper half. Your lower legs and your and your lower half in your delivery is firing before your top half is firing, and they're not firing together. So when that happens, your legs are going to fire and your upper half is going to stay there. And then your upper half is going to be a little later. So that means that it's a little behind, which makes your release point a little high arm side, right? If you're starting to miss low into your glove side, it's the opposite. Your upper half is ahead of your lower half in the timing and from a timing aspect. Just nicked his jersey. That definitely hit him. That hit his jersey. From behind home plate. Yeah. Yeah, first base. And you can almost hear it. All right, so runner on first. 
Curtis, as calm as he's been, going to try to maintain that. The three runners that they have had, a walk, a dropped third strike, and a hit by pitch. All right, one out, runner on first. You got to hit it to the right side. Charlemagne, high hop. Or third base. That's cool. <laughs> Castellone couldn't come up with it. All right, there you go. Now, to me, that seemed like a pretty. Almost looking to go to second base. Okay, so this is a good this is a good time to say this. You can see the third baseman. He does not. He he's not moving as the ball is being hit. He stops his momentum. So he does his pre step. He does his pre step, but then he stops. And that initial moment when he stops, that leaves him vulnerable in his range right he can't he's not ready to move as much as he should be when you do your pre-step you should be landing or you should be landing or coming forward as the ball is being hit so therefore you basically get on your toes and as soon as you end your pre-step that's when the ball is hit and that's when you have the greatest range that you can possibly do be and at that play the third baseman like i said he did his pre-step but then he stopped right and that kind of stopped his momentum and then he he didn't get that ball Ooh, nice pitch though nice pitch so that was a one two count that was a one two count outside fastball he was trying to get into chase it's really important to tell your pitchers that every pitch you throw is intentional every pitch is intentional whether it's a ball whether you intentionally throw a ball or intentionally throw a strike, there is never any waste pitches. I've always, I've always disliked that term, waste pitch. Oh, it's just a waste pitch. Nothing is a waste pitch. Everything is intentional, even if you are purposefully throwing a ball, right? When you purposefully throw a ball, you're most likely ahead of the count, right? You're trying to either change the hitter's eye level, you're trying to get them to chase, you're trying to do something. Um, Make them make a mistake. Slow roller, get the oh, get, get him out. There you go. All right, there you go. It stays one nothing, Rhode Island. After two, all right, one nothing. So, like I said, this is a great opportunity for you as a coach, right here, right here, right. telling your team You're watching to football. remind them that the pitcher's throwing strikes. That he's not going to walk you. Get your bat on the ball. And put the ball in play. All right. So, do we have any questions out there? So, I know that some people have joined the uh, joined the chat uh, after the fact, at, like while we've been watching the game. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying this. Um, and I remember uh, in the beginning, I asked where everybody was from. So, if you want to put in the chat where you're from, it would be really cool to see uh, kind of just where everybody's from and where you're tuning in from. So, as you can see in my name, I'm, I'm from Maryland, um, born and raised in Maryland. And uh, I know that uh, one of our one of our participants here is uh, Jordan. He's from Washington. Um, so, like I said, it'll be really cool to uh, to see where you're tuning in from. And as always, put your put any questions that you want me to answer in the chat. I'm an open book. Um. So yeah, like I said, uh, I'm the commissioner of the Maryland Keys in uh, Montgomery County, Maryland, and um, we are, we're, I mean, not necessarily new, but we're kind of do, is doing a rebrand. And uh, I do have to say, it's it's pretty challenging trying to get new teams started up. Um, but I mean, we're doing well. So if you're if you're in Maryland or Montgomery County, Maryland, and you're looking for uh, for a program to play with, uh, like I said, I'm the man, I'm the commissioner for the uh, Maryland Keys. So um, feel free to reach out, and we can get you set up. We have Joe from Southern California, new head coach. Uh, he's been an assistant for coach for two seasons. Nice job. And hopefully everything's going well, Joe. Hopefully uh, you're making a, a nice transition to head coach. Um, and, I mean, there's the, the difference between the assistant coach and the head coach can be drastic um, for some for some. Uh, organization, but then others, it may not be. It, it, I guess it all depends on how you work with your coaches. Um, 
I would say a good head coach would, you know, assign assign like jobs to their assistant coaches to make them feel valued, to make them feel like they're doing something, to make them feel like they're contributing. Um, so have them like have a role. Um, I know that one of them, like, you know, you're the bench coach or you you're in control of moving the defense around like it, like in the middle of the inning um, and just different things like that. Maybe you're like the BP thrower or something like that. So um, hopefully, and like I said, Joe, hopefully you're making the, a nice transition to head coach. Um, how are we doing? I know it helps that he's gone five. Trying to learn as much as possible. As always, I love it. Always, right now, always learning. I, I never stop I learning. Baseball is a is a great teacher, and, and it's it's a like, it's something that you can always learn something new at. Johnny is from Everett, Washington. Nice to nice to see you here, Johnny. Thanks for coming. What was Jenna's reaction to the hug? I love that. All right, so let's see if this pitcher still has it still has it on. Right where he left off. His mechanics have not changed the entire game for the three innings. They are still fluent. They are still repeatable. Um, every single pitch looks the same, and that's why he's so accurate. We get all these amazing nuggets. And as you can see, he just threw a ball, but he has thrown so many consistent strikes that even when he does make a mistake and when he throws a ball, the hitters chase after it because they think that a strike is coming. That's the power of accuracy, and that's the power of hitting your locations. If you if you were ever wondering what's more important, velocity or location, um, hopefully you hopefully you know this location. Velocity will always come. You can always improve the velocity, but you can throw 100 miles an hour, but if you don't throw a strike, you're not going to be out there, and you're not going to be successful. So the first thing should always be Always oh, location and accuracy. They got Connor on the right road. If you're going to listen to Hamilton in the car all the time, like, you're definitely on the right road. <laughs> so he just got another strikeout. High pitch, high fastball. Just blowing it by him. I like that idea, you know. So your third inning, third inning, this, this lineup has seen you at least once. Start off with a changeup. Start off with that off speed, right? At the bottom of this lineup being part of their production. And then climb the ladder again with the fastball. Well I mean, you can just you can just tell that this kid he knows how to pitch. He's, he's thinking like a pitcher, and he's not just a thrower. And that's that's something that you don't come come around too often. Power in this bat. Took something off. Fouled it back. So that was a little off speed, and as you can see, he sped the batter's bat up, right? So one, two count. What would you throw? Fastball. <laughs> the question is location. You've already thrown it a, a high a couple times, so maybe low either outside or inside. If you're throwing it outside, trying to make him chase, um, and throw it the two seam outside, two seam outside fastball. Boom. Good pitch on the outside corner, and he has now struck out five in a row. Seven. So let's do a little deeper dive on to Connor Curtis. It's brought to you by Dollar Car Rental. So favorite sport to play is baseball. Judge, favorite player is Judge. Spelling. Spender Bermuda. This is so cool to see how, like, what these kids are interested in, like, what they're, you know, what the details are. Regional tournament as well. Pretty good moment, and he is absolutely dealing cards right now. Yeah, he's killing so it, man. Confident. He is killing it. Tell when pitchers attack middle, middle. There's just an absolute confidence in the stuff that he has. So she just said something that's really important awesome that you're catching she said middle, middle. Like you can't wait. Just and with a hitter when they're feeling it, they don't want to get out of the batter's oh, box. Come on, give me another. Let's hear one. talk. So she said middle, middle, and that's really important because great pitchers, they know that the strike zone is basically nine areas. There's high, middle, low, or high, middle, in on the high. There's or out, middle, in on the high, and then the middle of the plate, and then the low part of the plate. There's outside, middle, in, and a great pitcher knows that and can throw to all of those locations. 
That's funny. When I watched the regional, when I watched the regional game, this kid was doing the exact same thing. It was really cool to see. Strikeout six, seven, and eight. Bring it up in the zone. That fastball getting late run away. And for the last strikeout of the inning, no chance. Blowing it by him. And she just said another great thing is like he also has movement on his fastball, you know. He also has movement and his ball is moving. So it, not only is he accurate, not only is he throwing with high velocity, his ball is moving. And I mean, that's completely deadly. Like, how is a 12 year old supposed to handle that? You know? Um, so, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or. I mean, they can be about baseball. They can be about me and my life. They can be, you know, just, you know, saying any comments or anything. We're open books. We're here. We're here for a little bit longer, about three more innings. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Hopefully I'm, you know, providing some good feedback and how my brain thinks. And when I see these kids and, you know, what, what I think about, you know, when I see their motions and see their mechanics, um, I have been talking a lot about the pitchers. So if you would like me to talk more about the hitters and their approach and their sort of mechanics, I'm more than more than willing to do that. I guess I kind of I guess I kind of cater towards pitchers because I was a pitcher in college. So that's kind of like where my where my base is. But um for the next couple of innings, I'll I'll try to I'll try to uh comment on the hitters and what they're what they're experiencing as well. So mm. So with this new kid, with this other kid coming out, you know, you have a, you have a one, you're, you have a one zero deficit. Your job as a pitcher is to try and, you know, keep that to one zero. You know, you want to make your pitches, you know, take it pitch by pitch, take it batter by batter. And you also can't forget, you also can't compare yourself to the other pitcher because at this point, this pitcher, this other pitcher is a really good pitcher. No, this Nolan kid who's who has the 1-0 deficit, he's a really good pitcher. And it's really important for him not to forget that because when you're going up against somebody who has all of these strikeouts and who has a no-hitter going, I think, I don't think they have a hit yet. It's really easy to think to yourself, oh, like I'm I'm not doing well. But you are doing well. You're pitching lights out. You're you're you just have one run on the board, and that's really good. So it's really important as a coach to remind your players of that that. Even though somebody who you're playing against is having a phenomenal game, that does not mean that you are doing poorly. You know, you are still doing great, even though they're having a little bit better game. Let's see what they're talking about here. It's really cool. So I was I was able I was fortunate enough to go to Cooperstown, um, Cooperstown Dreams Park when I was 12, and. Uh, it was one of the greatest experiences uh, of my life, and one huge part of it was the camaraderie and the sort of just spending time with other teams and getting to know other teams in the dorm area. It was really, really awesome, and it's a great, awesome experience. All right, let's see how he responds. First pitch to the... Last hitter in the continuous batting order is John Wozniak. All right, so if you're the hitter, you've you've seen this guy at least once now, right? So you know what you should be looking for. Um, oh one, you're still looking for. I I think you're still looking for a fastball. Still looking for a fastball. So I would say that that's a good take. I would say that's a good take. Even though you're down 0-2, that's not what you're looking for. That wasn't what you're looking for. Now you have to protect. Now you're looking for anything. All right, so it looked like a high fastball. I'm not sure if that's glitching for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, I guess it can't be perfect, right? <laughs> uh, but that was a high fastball, I believe, and he fouled it off, so he kept on fighting. Since it was a high fastball, I would look here. for all speed now. Two strikes. You're back to the top of the order after yep. This. Oh, that pitch. Normally, first, youth players, they are very predictable. Twice. And not from – they're not predictable from a kid's standpoint, but from a coach's standpoint who's been around the game for a while. And, so you know, they're, they're very predictable. So if you see a fastball – Ooh. 
if you see a fastball and you foul it off or anything like that, then it's a higher percentage that you will see an off-speed pitch the next time. So that's something that you could talk talk to your team about of trying to predict what the pitcher is going to throw instead of react to it, you know? Nice pitch. Nice pitch. Five strikeouts for Nolan Gifford, and we head back to the top of the order. This week, Sunday Night Baseball right here. Sixth annual MLB Little League Classic. Historic Bowman Field. And seven miles from where we are. I know I've said this before, Series but like I've never been I've never been a coach to tell a kid to, to like to take a pit, take the first pitch or take until you get a strike. I have always been I've always been a believer of swing at the best pitch possible. You know, and if that is the first pitch down the middle, you crush that ball. Crush that ball. It's the best pitch you're going to see all day. Hey, that's what uh, that's what Jordan was saying. But right, even though they're still winning by one, you know, so nobody's attempted a bunt yet. So that's that's a good way to, you know, just kind of break up the energy, you know, break up the flow of the pitcher. That's something that makes pitchers really great pitchers even greater is when they start getting into a rhythm and start getting into a flow. You want to break that up any way that you can. All right. So 2-1 count. You're looking for a fastball. You're only looking for a fastball. If you see anything else, let it go. It's always a risk to lay a bunt down. There you go. All right. So that was a good attempt. That was a good attempt. Now you got 2 2. I like it. Um, 2 2 count. Yes. I would still be looking for a fastball, but I mean, obviously, the off speed is still, he's still capable of throwing that off speed. But if you notice, so fastball. If you notice, I'm going back to the pitcher now. If you're going, if you notice the pitcher on his off speed, he slows his arm down. He slows his arm down. So it's not his arm speed is not as fast as when he throws the fastball. Um, and that's that's a good tell that you can tell your hitters is that if you see his arm speed go slower. Nice pitch. Wow. Um, so that's I mean that's a great tell. To tell your hitters is that when he throws an off-speed pitch, if he slows his arm speed down, um, so when you see that, load back and then fire. Two outs. How do you pitch to Connor Curtis? I would walk him. She said, "Do you pitch to Connor Curtis?" One nothing game. I mean, his bat is one of the biggest here. Three home runs in the regionals. Huh. So this kid's just got it all. He can hit too. I'll comment after the coach stops talking. Okay. He's the kid that has some. He, he can he can hit right. So no, not like seventy five percent. Okay, I need you to bring it, come hard. If you walk him, who cares? Okay, don't let up. All right, Jax, be a wall, be a wall. We got him last time. Let's get him now. Okay. I like that move. I like that visit by the coach. Do I need to get a check? This kid has two outs, but he has the best hitter up. It's really important to get this kid out for the third out so that you don't continue the inning and that, they, like, this kid – so, you, yeah, like I said, you just don't continue the inning. I like that visit by the coach to calm his pitcher down for the best hitter. You know, refocus, calm down, breathe, do what you do. I love it. I love that advice. And if you're the hitter, you're not expecting a strike. You know that the pitcher knows that you're the best hitter. So you are looking for anything away, and you're not chasing. Your pitcher is going to try to get you to chase. Exactly. First pitch was all the way out. Second pitch was all the way in. You're not going to get a pitch over the plate because you are the best hitter. Don't chase. Be disciplined. Ooh, that was tough. That was close. That was close. But like I said before, the umpire is being consistent. She's called that now three times. Three and one. Exactly. He's trying to get you to chase. 
not getting anywhere near the plate, near the center of the plate, because he knows that you're going to hit it. So you have a 3-1 count. You are only swinging if it is the most perfect pitch you have ever seen. <laughs> I will never tell a kid not to swing, but there you go. That was a really great pitch by the pitcher. Now, if you're the hitter, yeah, I mean, you're looking for anything, right? You never know down the road if these two meet again at another level. You still want to be disciplined because you want to get that walk. Ooh. Now that is a momentum swing. This team should carry that momentum into their hitting and understand that they can hit this kid. They can hit this kid. This is a perfect moment. This is a perfect inning for them to get a few hits, to string a couple hits together and get and at least tie the game. It's that New York City buzz. I'm trying to mute it so we can answer some questions. So like I said, I haven't seen any questions come through yet. If you have any questions for me, for if you want me to answer, if you have anything that um, you want me to comment on or anything like that, or even if like during the game, as you can see, I'm trying to comment on different things and different things that I see. If you have something specific that you want me to comment on, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll, I'll be sure to get to it. So um, as I said before, thank you guys for joining in today. This is, this is really fun. I, I think this is really cool. I think this is really cool that we're, that we're able to, you know, get together, watch this game. Um, and just kind of, you know, talk baseball and just share, share in this, in this little thing here. So, um, I do appreciate you guys tuning in today and hopefully, hopefully you've, uh, been learning, learning something from all the talking I've been doing. <laughs> um, as far as, uh, future chats or future lives. I'm not sure if I will be able to do another one after this. I will try my best. Um, but I did my, my schedule with just like, we go back to school next week. Um, I'm also the commissioner of the Maryland Keys. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to have time to do a live. Um, but if you're really enjoying this and you really think this is cool, um, I will, I will, try to make this a more regular thing where we can do some lives. We can try to watch something that's on TV um, or even just like a Q and a session, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. So I think, uh, I think that would be really cool. Just a, a just a way to connect with you guys um, and just answer any questions that you have. All right. So let's see how this, let's see how this team responds. We know how important baseball is in Cuba and certainly the success of all the Japanese teams that have been here recently, Jess. That should be as interesting a game to start this. So World like Series I said, we're gonna see. Oh, we see it in the World Baseball. That Classic. strikeout, you just struck out the, the best finals. hitter of the team. Who's left standing and, and level to be able to see this for the this first is a time and it was the third out. So right after that high moment, that you're able to go into the dugout and you're able to regroup and get your bats this is a perfect time this is where they need to capitalize this is where they need to get some hits and tie the game that was close he's got eight punch outs just like just like the opposing pitcher gifford who appeared to throw his last pitch and only gifford eight strikeouts and right now connor curtis like i said if you're the hitter you're choking up you're having a short swing and it looks like the pitcher, he may have been affected by that strikeout. He may have been affected by that strikeout, and that's very possible. He's still, you have to remember, he's still 12. He's still 12 years old, right? Sometimes the, he just, sometimes 12-year-olds or young kids, they just let their emotion get the best of them, and they let them take over, you know? That was a nice pitch, you know, back at it. Um, but I mean, that's, that's something as a coach, you can tell the hitting team is like, Hey, that pitcher just struck out, you know, try to capitalize on that. Show and bunt, just trying to put the ball in play. Cause we haven't seen a whole lot of that. Just the one fly out. Everything else has been strikeouts. One nothing, and the team from Rhode Island is yet to have hit either. All right, 
So no hits. Two two. There's the off speed pitch and that misses. There you go. So if you're the hitter, man, you don't want to chase. You're looking. You're looking for a fastball. You're looking for him to try and bury. Nice, nice. There you go. Like I said, using that momentum from the previous inning. Let's go. It was a great at bat. That's a great point. That was a great at bat. That was great discipline at the plate. Always the hardest call for any umpire. Daily next up, and he fouls that first one off. All right, I see a couple questions come in, so I will I will definitely be able to uh, get to those at the commercial break. Thanks for thanks guys for sending in those questions. This team from Henderson receives some financial support and contributions from the Golden Knights. The Henderson Silver Knights. All right, so if you're the batter, you have 01. You're looking for another fastball. Now you have to. You are in the driver's seat now. If you're if you're the hitter, if you're the hitting team, you're in the driver's seat. As I talked about building off of that momentum, you are in the driver's seat. You can't let that go. That pitch, I feel like he should have hit that. That was a perfect pitch. There you go. Hit, going to the right side. He knows situational baseball. He knows that he has a man on first. I mean, he could have been thinking that, or he could have just been late on the fastball. Who knows, right? But if... If he is trying to go to the right side, that's great situational hitting. Um, that's exactly what you want to do. It's a difficult game, too, for the fielders because there's no action. Have to stay on your toes. Ah. It is a swing and a miss. So Daly is gone. Strike that was a nice pitch. Nine. I mean, that was a nice pitch. The pitcher came back. So hopefully the hitting team, hopefully Nevada doesn't let that get to him. You have a man on first. You're trying to do everything you can. To get that guy around. Liam Wells next up. He squares to bunt. And that's strike one. One of them is bunting. I was literally just about to say that. Maybe you bunt to change things up. You know, bunting is a great way to get the pitcher out of rhythm. You know, to surprise them a little bit. All up away. That was a great take. That was a great take. You have a one, you have an 0 1 count. That would be a really easy pitch to chase. That was a great discipline at the plate. Huh, talk about chasing. So the, the, the one before that was a great discipline at the plate. That one, not so much. Uh, you probably should have let that one go. So instead of a. Instead of a 2-1 count, you have a 1-2 count. Um, still, looking for a fastball. This kid's going to bury a fastball. You know it. Oh, get there, get there, get there, get there. Wow, momentum. That's what I'm saying, momentum. Momentum. He gets his 10th strikeout, but the fastball allows Wells to go to first. And you're back to the top of the order. Keenan's got that injured thumb. Been having a hard time unless he can. All right, first and third. Being able to hold on to it. You have to, if you're Nevada, you have to score this inning. This is your inning. You have to score this run. Come on, Cruz. Walter will keep his eye on the catcher, Queenan. We'll see also if Wells is inclined to go. Leave it high. Leave it high. Not running second base. If you're a hitter, so I, I, I like this visit. I like this visit. You can see that the pitcher is getting a little, getting a little shaked up, right? A little shaken up. Um, you want to go out there and remind him of how, of how good he is. You know, hey, you just started this game with almost all strikeouts in the first three innings. You know, let's get back to that. You know, do what you do. Calm down. Can you see the baseball? All right. All right. Let's go. Let's start squeezing it. Okay. Come on. Play it again. Exactly. Just try to calm him down. Remind him of why he is good. He is good because he throws strikes. He has fluent mechanics. You know, he stays calm in the moment. Remind him of that. And then let him do his thing. On the other side, if you're the hitter, you're trying to do anything you can to get the bat on the ball on the ground. 
or in the outfield. You know, situational hitting, getting a fly ball to the outfield or ground ball in the infield to the right side. Use the pitcher's velocity to your advantage. There he goes, trying to. One and two. Well, the way Curtis is pitching, it feels very much like this could be the game. the inning that decides the game. Yep. That's what, that's that's what I've been saying, right? This is the inning. No Nevada has to score on this in this inning. By the catcher Cleanin. One and two. Swing and a miss. Ooh. A fastball that popped that glove. That was a good pitch. I mean, that was a good pitch. For Connor Curtis and the second out of this oh, inning. you lost the stream. 11 Ks. We've seen both managers come out, talk to their pitchers, and they just gear it up another notch, Rab. As much as he's been throwing below, Lester didn't have a chance. Took something off, and David Edwards, the shortstop, swings and misses. This was the guy that had a terrific regional Edwards. Five hits, eight at bats. Very late on that fastball, and it looks like Connor Curtis has oh. locked back in after that conversation. Back to back, huh? Breaking ball, then the fastball, almost the same tunnel, too. Ah. Uh. Called strike three, a dozen punch outs for Connor Curtis. Nevada will strand the two runners at second and third. When he needed it, he found it. All right, guys. I will be back. Apparently, you guys lost the stream. Tourists that turn into scientists. Tourists photographing thousands of miles of remote coral reefs that can be analyzed by AI in real time. So researchers uh, can identify which right. areas are at risk and help life underwater flourish. Get more from your morning routine. Make 20 cups of deliciously rich coffee with Coffee Made at Home for the price of one cup from a coffee shop. Coffee's perfect mate. Coffee Made. At PNC Bank, you can find us in big cities and small towns across the U.S., where our focus is to always support the people who live and work there. Because you call these communities home, and we do too. PNC Bank. What was that? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? All right, so How much fun was let's that? Do... That was no kind of fun at all. You never and... stop fighting. That's us. That's who we are. 